Gentlemen, boys, girls, in his out, and in between us. My name's Dan, and welcome to Pat Reports The Bad Bits. Yes, we're back. <laughs> Today is Friday, the 13th of November. Almost five years after the death of a student during a moped chase in Hackney, London, a police officer has now appeared in court charged with causing death by dangerous driving. Did I just read that correctly? A copper being charged with death by dangerous driving? <laughs> well, damn! That's a first, or at least it feels like it. The charges follow an application for judicial review into an earlier Crown Prosecution Service decision not to prosecute the officer. No surprise there. Westminster Magistrates Court heard last Tuesday that 43-year-old Paul, Paul, PC Paul Summerson from Colchester was involved in a pursuit that led to the death of 18-year-old Lewis Johnson from Holloway in February 2016. Police were chasing Johnson and a passenger on suspicion of theft when a moped collided with a van near Clapton Common in Upper Clapton. Johnson went into cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead at the scene. Paul's mother, Anne Johnson, was not satisfied with the original investigation into the circumstances of his death and in 2017 she said, All I know is that Lewis went out one morning and I feel like I was robbed of a chance to say goodbye properly. I want it investigated thoroughly. The incident was investigated by police, but the Crown Prosecution Service decided not to charge Summerson or his colleague. However, the IOPC, the police watchdog, also launched an inquiry into the case, releasing a report in May 2017, which led to the judicial review. Summerson has also been charged with causing serious injury by dangerous driving after the accident left a second man seriously injured. Summerson was released on unconditional bail and is due to appear at the Old Bailey on December the 1st. I'll certainly be watching out for the outcome of this as I think it could open the door to a lot of claims for deaths that have occurred during police per, 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 per shoes. The IOPC, who were investigating police corruption into the Stephen Lawrence case, have recently said that it has new information after former Met Commissioner Lord Stephen, or Lord Stevens, withheld information from the 1998 McPherson inquiry into Stephen's killing. A police chief involved in corruption? Never. 18-year-old Stephen Lawrence was killed whilst waiting for a bus in Eltham, or Eltham, South East London in April 1997. After the initial investigation, five suspects were arrested but were not charged. However, in 2012, Gary Dobson and David Norris were convicted of his murder. The IOPC say now they are searching through archive materials since the new information came to the attention of the IOPC. A spokesperson for the IOPC said, we anticipate it may take some months to conclude these and finalise our complaint investigation report. They say that when the report is concluded, the IOPC will decide whether to refer the case to prosecutors. Will they? Won't they? Who knows? Probably not. But hey, at least the IOPC looked like they're doing something. An inquiry in 2015 found that very senior Met officers uh, failed to provide full fl 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 <laughs> An inquiry in 2015 found that very senior Met officers failed to provide full, frank and truthful information on the issue of corruption to the Stephen Lawrence inquiry. It focused on two letters sent to the McPherson inquiry by Lord Stevens, but was halted while four former Met officers were investigated over their work on the initial murder investigation. A file has now been sent to the Crown Prosecution Service, which will decide if the four are to be charged. Nurse Lucy Letby has been re-arrested and now charged after being previously arrested both in 2018 and 2019 as part of a probe into deaths of children and the neonatal unit in the Countess of Chester Hospital. Letby is said to have been arrested on suspicion of murder and re uh, relation to the deaths of eight babies and attempted murder of nine babies. I wonder if she changed her name from Lucy Shipman to Lucy Letby. Police said a healthcare worker had been arrested based on further information gathered by detectives. Detective Chief Inspector Paul Hughes of Cheshire Police said yesterday that it had been more than three years since we first launched an investigation into a number of baby deaths and non-fatal and non-fatal collapses at the neonatal unit at the hospital. In that time, a dedicated team of detectives have been working extremely hard on this highly complex and very sensitive case, doing everything they can as quickly as they can to identify what has led to these baby deaths and collapses. In July 2018, a healthcare professional was arrested on suspicion of murder in relation to the deaths of eight babies and the attempted murder of six at the neonatal unit at the Countess of Chester Hospital, 
She was subsequently bailed pending further inquiries. In June 2019, the healthcare professional was rearrested on suspicion of murder in relation to the deaths of eight babies and the attempted murder of six babies. She was also arrested in connection with the attempted murder of three additional babies. Today, as part of our ongoing inquiries, the healthcare professional has been rearrested on suspicion of murder in relation to the deaths of eight babies and attempted murder of nine babies. After being charged with the murder of eight babies and attempted murder of ten, today, as part of our ongoing inquiries, the healthcare professional has been rearrested on suspicion of murder in relation to the deaths of eight babies and the attempted murder of nine. Well, after being charged with the murder of eight babies and attempted murder of ten, Detective Chief Inspector Paul Hughes of Cheshire Police said this is an extremely difficult time for all the families and it is important to remember that at the heart of this there are a number of bereaved families seeking answers as to what happened to their children. Arrested for murder and attempted murder twice before and it's taken them nearly three years and they still couldn't find enough to charge her with until now. Now, I'm pretty sure that all natal units are extensively covered by CCTV. I mean, how hard can it have been to check the CCTV at those previous arrests and see if she was anywhere near the poor babies who were killed or the ones that thankfully survived? It's not fucking rocket science. A Birmingham judge has let a sick pedo cunt walk from court after being found in possession of a collection of 700 child sex abuse pictures. Judge Robert Brown, sitting at Leicester Crown Court this week, heard how 20-year-old Morgan Overton, a music student at the University of Birmingham, had amassed 700 photographs of children being sexually abused, featuring boys as young as just one year old. In July 2018, when Overton was 18, Leicestershire police went to his, the home of his family in Springfield Way, Oakham, to search for electronic devices, but he was away at university. His father went with detectives to Birmingham University, where police spoke to Overton and seized his laptop and mobile phone. Eight months later, in March the following year, he was interviewed. Overton pleaded guilty to three counts of making indecent images at Leicester's Magistrates Court, where he spoke at length about his personal life and how the trigger was the death of a school friend which sent him on a dark path. Wow. If this is what people do when a friend dies, there ain't no child safe. Why out of bollocks? No one hears about the death of somebody and then says to themselves, hmm, Fred Blobs just died. I know, I'll go and watch some child porn and make myself feel fucking better. Cunt. The files found on his devices included pictures of boys aged from 1 to 15 and Overton's computer also showed that he had shared the internet links to indecent images with other paedophiles online, although he was not charged with distribution of child pornography. That's right, was not charged for distribution, but he clearly distributed it. Oh, and he had software to let him surf the internet anonymously and also uh, to access the dark web. Who else finds it odd that someone blaming the death of a friend, which would put you into mourning and maybe depression, finds the mental capacity and is savvy enough to not only add anonymizing software on their computer, learn to use and actually use the dark web and finds other pedos to chat with and share pictures with? Please... Please don't say it's just me that finds that level of cognitive thinking far too much for someone blaming a difficult time in his life. For fuck's sake, Judge Robert Brown, are you a complete fucking moron or are you hoping to swap notes with this cunt? Drea Becker, representing Overton, said this is a young man who went through a very difficult time when he engaged in self-harm, made suicide attempts and describes himself as being in a very dark place and struggled with his sexual identity. He went down a rabbit hole. There was chat legal pornography and that descended into illegal images. It was a form of self-harm. Self-harm. Put the sick fucko cunt in jail in general population and he won't have to self-harm, will he? Job done. One less sick fuck to worry about. Judge Robert Brown sentenced Overton to a three-year community order with 20 days of one-to-one -one therapy to help him avoid reoffending. He will also have to do 120 hours of unpaid work and be subject to a five-year sexual harm prevention order I have to sign on at police stations for that period. It's plain to me, he said, that you are fully remorseful. You were racked with guilt. My God. It was not guilt he's racked with. It was fear because he got caught and his arsehole was quivering at the thought of bedding down with Bubba and Bubba whispering in his ear. You ever had your shit pushed in? <laughs> your shit pushed in? Simple question. Nah? Yeah. Had my shit pushed in. Oh, yeah, man. I had... My shit 
Pushed in, bro! Big time! <laughs>
Before I close this story, it might interest you to know that upon further investigation into Judge Bernadette Baxter, I found an article which gives details about other paedophile cases that she's presided over and the piss poor sentencing she seems to enjoy dishing out. On the UK database.net, there's an article. The opening paragraph reads, here is Judge Bernadette Baxter. She is a judge who seems to think that the abuse of children is not a serious enough crime to warrant a custodial sentence. Some of the sentences are quite simply an insult to the victims involved. Judge Bernadette Baxter is based at Manchester Minshall Street, Crown Court. In August 2018, Home Office advisor Gary Hodgkiss was spared prison after he turned up to meet what he believed was a 12-year-old girl, following online sexual grooming. Also, he was caught with several hundred indecent images and movies of children featuring infants and toddlers being orally raped or tortured. Judge Bernadette Baxter allowed Hodgkiss to walk free from court with a suspended sentence. In March 2017, Lucy Howarth avoided jail after breaking a three-month-old baby's arm in a fit of rage. Howarth then failed to report his injuries for two days. She was convicted of child cruelty but avoided prison with a suspended sentence. Judge Bernadette Baxter also spared her unpaid work. May 2017, a student engineer from Oldham, William Hastings, made images classed as the worst Category A images showing children as young as four years old being tortured or raped. He used search engines to look for pictures of both young girls and boys engaged in various kinds of sexual activity. Judge Bernadette Baxter said she felt able to give Hastings a suspended sentence. March 2018, Judge Bernadette Baxter handed 85-year-old devout churchgoer Kenneth Hardacre a suspended sentence after he sexually assaulted two girls aged 13 and 14. Judge Bernadette Baxter told him, you are an abusive bully. The girls were in their early teens. January 2017, deviant chef Christian Abu Shaya exposed himself to an eight-year-old girl whilst wanking, and he also sexually assaulted a female flight attendant. At the time of the offence, the Spanish national was already on police bail for his similar offence, but Judge Bernadette Baxter handed him just a three-year community order and no prison. There is a long list of more sick fuckos that this sick fucko is allowed to walk free from her courtroom. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you to all channel supporters, especially these guys who support via Patreon. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, please stay safe, look after each other, film the police, other officials, and please have a good weekend.